There was a time when it was believed that the shape of a person's head, its dimensions, could tell you if that person was a criminal. Those theories, now discredited, help establish the study of crime and of criminals. Criminology. You know, like all sciences, or maybe I should say uh, disciplines, the study of uh, crime has really changed a lot over the years. Now, one of the earliest formal methods of studying crime was called phrenology. And then, of course, we've had uh, fingerprinting for a long time, which so that was considered to be the most exact science for determining uh, who a person was. But of course, now we have DNA. And that is the exact science for determining who's guilty and who's innocent. But in this course, we're not going to deal so much with the criminalistics as we are with the, the psychology of crime. What? Yes. Can I help you? What are you doing? Well, I'm a Professor Maxwell. I'm doing a class on beginning criminology. That's fine. Except I'm Professor Fulton, and this is my intro biology class. Biology. Oh. Then, uh, this is not Haney Hall. No. It would help a lot if all these buildings didn't look exactly alike. It might. First day of the semester, I think it get a little confusing. Seems that way. Class, I'll tell you what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to turn the class over to uh, Professor Fulton here, who's going to lecture you on the fascinating subject of biology. I mean, where would we be without biology, of course? Like back in the dark ages, probably. Thank you. Sorry, or maybe in the right classroom. I'll have another. Oh, you don't disapprove, do you? I wouldn't know how. Well, it's not like we can't afford it. Omdicom is the success story of our times. What didn't your husband mention? You're not that successful, Nelson. Don't lecture me. By all means, have another. Damn decent of you to show up. I am so sorry. You know, the dinner is probably an iceberg by now. Who the hell do you think you are? Mr. Raymond, I'm... Everyone thinks you're this girl from the PR department on the make. They don't know that you're willing to do whatever you can to get the inside story on us for that rag you secretly write for. Yeah, that's right. She's an investigative reporter for financial press hoping to bring down the company with the smear campaign against me and any of you she can get her claws into. You are drunk. Nelson. That's enough. Sure as hell is. 
I never liked her, and I never trusted her. She's a spy, and I can prove it. You're a liar. You might have gotten away with it if you slept with me, too. <laughs> all right. We've all had enough fun for tonight. The party's over. I want to see you in my office in the morning. Yes, sir. Not so fast. We still have lots we have to talk about. Unbelievable. I can't believe it. You can't take Nelson seriously. I wouldn't put it past her. I don't want to believe it. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. I never betrayed her. I don't envy her. Okay, miss? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Look, we just may ask you a few more questions, so you don't intend to leave town soon, do you? No. Why do you ask? I thought this was a gas leak or something. Uh, yeah, that was my first guess, too. And what was it? Well, it seems the firefighters found an incendiary device. So what does that mean? Well, they'll have to check it out to be certain, but it uh, looks like this thing could have been set off with a remote control. Is that possible? Nothing's ever 100%, but these firefighters rarely make a mistake on something like this. But who would have set it off? <laughs> Miss, you'd be surprised at what some people would do. Please. You know, I wasn't a big fan of his. It's a horrible way to die. You'll let me know what you find out? You'll be one of the first. safe now. Of course, there are uh, certain questions that a criminal justice system must answer. Uh, for instance, does the suspect have a sufficient motive? Uh, did he have an opportunity? And in the absence of any kind of a legitimate confession, what kind of evidence is there? Eyewitness, circumstantial, or forensic? No, this is the most heinous crime an individual can commit. And as criminologists, what we're interested in is why? Why do people kill other people?
You know, most murders are committed for very mundane reasons. Passion, race hatred, revenge, and the ever popular greed. Yes, Henrietta. Um, Professor Maxwell, where do serial killers fit into this? Oh, they're uh, in a league by themselves, Henrietta. We're going to deal with that a little later in the term. But right now, I'm interested in people more like ourselves. You know, any one of us is capable of committing a murder under the right set of circumstances. Even professors of criminology. That depends on the quality of your term paper, Henrietta. <laughs> <laughs> But no, you, most of us usually don't go around committing murders. So when one of us, usually law-abiding citizens, does, we have to search out why. Hello, I'm calling in regard to your credit card account. You're delinquent 90 days, and your credit rating is in jeopardy. Mr. Parker, this is your auto leasing company. You're three payments behind, so we're proceeding with reclamation of your vehicle. If you have any questions, please call 818. Mr. Parker, this is Elena in Joan St. John's office. Ms. St. John needs your services on a case. Could you please call me? Thank you. Office. Hey, Elena, it's Mike. Hi. I just got your message. Yes, are you available for a case? Am I available? When does she want me to start? Immediately. Oh, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess I could shuffle a few things around and start, oh, say this morning. I'm glad you could accommodate us. Hey, for Joan, I will always make the time. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, give her my best, will you? Bye now. Thanks. Easy, Alice. Hey, Charlie. You? This call better make me happy. Charlie, lighten up, will you? Look, I've been out of the country for a few months working on a very important case. You know how my job is. I know it doesn't pay. I want my money. I don't blame you, but I got a check for you. No kidding? No, I'm not kidding. In full? Yeah. Really? Yeah, just have somebody over here by 10 to uh, take me to the yard to get my car. All right, all right. Uh, Charlie, you are the man. Samantha! Giddy, giddy, giddy! Now, recap. Ciao, time. Stories. Yesterday evening, Nelson Raymond, chief financial officer of corporate giant Omnicom, was brutally murdered in an explosion at his home. Seen here earlier today is Cheryl Collins, an investigative reporter who is the primary suspect in the bombing. In other news, the city council announced yet again plans to bring a major football franchise to the L.A. area. I won't hold my breath. See you tonight. Pretty much it. Well, the co-worker said the two of them had a thing going, and the eyewitness said that they had a big fight and then he was killed. I'm accused of being an undercover reporter. How's that work? Well, I don't know. You got to ask her. You guys found some C4 in her garage. It's the same stuff the firefighter said caused the explosion, along with some wires, a couple of fuses, you know, just the usual stuff we all have in our garage. Could have been planted. Yeah, right. And if frogs had wings, they wouldn't live in the swamps. Come on, Mike, you were a cop. Now you know we've got enough here for a righteous bus. Omnicom's right up there with Enron. Uh, must be a lot of heat to nail her. Well, the investigation's not over yet. Never know what might pop up. Well, you know that better than anybody, Mike. Isn't that why you're out there making the big bucks instead of being in here with the good guys? Miss Collins, I'm Mike Bryant. I've been uh, detained as an investigator on your case by Miss St. John. I've already told her everything I know. Well, it would help me if I could hear it from you. Go ahead. I don't seem to have any pressing engagements. 
Thank you. Anything you tell me will have the same confidentiality as you'd have with an attorney. First question. Who had a motive to kill Raymond? They had on to come, for starters. Well, the company is a real rat's nest. All the major players were at the party. Carl Larch, president and CEO of Omticom, he's responsible for all of their real estate, energy, cable TV interests, was a one-time pitch man for bodybuilding miracles. Probably only a couple of steps away from an indictment on fraud charges. Larch's wife, Betty, the resident black widow, reputed to be the brains behind the brains. Charles Burke, head of marketing, and I suspect procurement for the rest of the boys club. On the Amdecom board is a former lobbyist who knows where the bodies are buried. Probably buried a few himself. Were you having an affair with Raymond? Next question. I'll take that as a no. Was uh, anyone at Amdecom? Good question. No. The night he was murdered, Raymond accused you of being an investigative reporter working undercover. Now, what was that about? Well, it's true. I was sent in by Financial Press to investigate some possible book cooking. A couple months ago, I got an anonymous tip that Omdcom is the next Enron. My publisher knows that this is big news, so I'm sent in. He calls in a favor from a PR firm, doctors up a resume, and since I can be charming at times, these well-tailored goons hired me. What was your connection to Raymond? Well, he's the chief financial officer, so he's the best source. I tell him I'm developing a PR piece on the company. I get an editor at the press to guarantee that it will run. And I convince Raymond that he's going to be a star. So why did he turn on you? I have no idea. Is that Cheryl Collins your real name? Well, I wouldn't lie about that. It's easier to keep my story straight. Clever girl. I'll see. Miss Collins, you're free to go. Are you dropping the charges? She made bail. I thought it was set at a million dollars. Her publisher managed to put up the necessary 10%. He likes my writing. Since we're supposed to keep the defense informed, my men just check this out. So it's a remote that set off the bomb? Same frequency. Prince? Smudged. So why are you showing me this? We just found that under a mat in the trunk of your car. You really think she'd keep it with her? I'm the one who called the police. Well, the cynic might say that that was a real clever move, that you didn't have a chance to get rid of it. I went straight home after I saw you. If it was her, she could have just dropped it on the way. Except I had her follow. She never had a chance to get around to the trunk of that car before we brought her in. Unless you have anything else to say, you can go. So now what do we do? I know you go home. And don't take any calls unless they're from Joan St. John or me. I'm going to press. Uh, especially the press. What's the hurry? I've got to feed that cat. It's going to be hell to pay. What are you doing here? Did I buy you lunch? Oh, isn't it my turn? Uh, actually, it is. Good, good. I didn't forget. Which means you want some. I do, but I'm willing to pay for it. I ordered your favorite Ching Lao's for lunch. Oh, Chinese? Where's the twice cooked pork? Here you go. Here's a napkin. Uh, you know what? You better take two. Didn't bring a fork, did you? Are you taking all of those? I'm going to save them for later. Want some more rice? It's fried. So? You know I don't like fried rice. You love fried rice. No, your daughter loves fried rice. I like brown rice. Oh. I guess that means you're not my daughter. I'm glad we got that straight. So what do you think of this young woman defendant? She's smart. Well, that helps. You think she's uh, innocent? Yeah, I do. She's attractive there, huh? Yeah, and it's got nothing to do with it. I just think she's too smart to knock somebody off this way. And if she didn't have an affair with the victim, she's got no motive. Well, we don't know that for sure, though, do we? If she didn't have an affair. I don't know, John. She was on an important assignment. It's just without a character. She's also an investigative reporter, and they can learn to put us some pretty fancy facades. Mm. 
Meaning maybe I'm not seeing her clearly? You didn't say that. How long have we known each other, Donald? 30 years? 32, you just got back from Vietnam. Right. And thanks to you, I uh, straightened up and uh, studied criminology. So anyway, you'll meet her and you'll judge for yourself. I'm meeting her? You told me you'd help me on this case. You didn't forget that, did you? You're playing on my absent-mindedness is very low. We both know I didn't promise you anything. She'll help because you're intrigued. Maybe. Maybe you'll help or maybe you're intrigued. I'm intrigued and maybe I'll help. Okay. Mostly angry. No, I didn't get a good look at him. Well, doesn't look like a burglary. Any idea what they were looking for? Not a clue. Huh. All right, we're done. All right, we're gonna go last. Look, I know this doesn't mean much to you, but uh, if she wanted to stage a stunt, wouldn't she make it look like the intruder had a purpose? Or she tried to establish that somebody else had access to her house, went in and put the C4 in her garage. When we find that somebody, I'll ask him. Anybody else have a key to the place? No. But anybody at work could have lifted it and made a copy. I'll have the locks changed. If you need me, don't hesitate to call, okay? And just what exactly are you going to be doing? Well, we go to work. Who's we? But you have a staff? You might say that, yeah. Are there any pictures of the room before the blast? Yeah, I'll get them to you. I still say that you should have been working with us on this one. Thought you had a winner, Dietrich. No, we do. I'd still like to have him on our side. Well, if she turns out to be guilty, not much I can do about that. Uh, where was her car parked? Outside to the left, 50 yards. Excuse me. Thanks. 
Hey, Johnson. How long do you figure I'm gonna have to put up with that rap? Probably until those cops that you testified against get out of the joint. They were dirty and you know it. All the same, Mike, there's just some guys who feel that you're not one of us. Since when? Since you turned in your badge. I didn't get a look at them at all. What would they want to take from her kitchen? Well, fingerprints, maybe. Nothing on this knob probably been wiped clean. You know, if they planted traces of that C4 in the garage, they would probably just be a thorough. What do you mean, if they planted it? You don't believe me? Oh, I have no reason to doubt you at all, but the police do. You want to show us around? Uh, sure. Whoever broke in here tried to access my computer files. They didn't find my backup. Huh, nice setup. Well, I do a lot of freelance work besides the financial press. Mm -hmm. Sometimes reports for a couple of cable outlets and a non-fiction book, which at the moment is overdue at my publishers. Wouldn't be about Omnicom by any chance. More than a chance. Which explains why they put up such generous bail. It wasn't for love. I did a little research on the two of you, by the way. Why don't I feel uh, flattered? It says you had a promising career at the police department. Until your first big investigation had the collateral damage of bringing down a few highly placed cops. Anything to do with your leaving the department? I'll do the interviews, okay? And the professor, I didn't find much. Just one article says you work for the police sometimes, the defense sometimes. But always in the background, never in the spotlight. Spotlight hurts my eyes. Why don't you tell us what happened the night of the murder after everyone left? Who told you? <laughs> what difference does it make? It's true, isn't it? Yes, it's true, but I want to know who blew my cover. Well, I never betray a confidence. But if you're nice enough to me, I just might make an exception. You know, I don't know if you're sober enough to hear this, but you could really save yourself a headache and some possible jail time if you... Just tell me about your company's finances. All right. We have all night. And I had to practically drag him into another room. Is that when you left? Uh, not exactly. It seemed like a good time to do a little search. I tried to help myself, but I didn't find anything. And then the phone rang. It was another phone, not on the main system. It was a private line, I think. I was afraid it might wake him. And then I heard him coming and figured I'd had enough for one night, so I got out of there. When would anybody have had the time to plant that bomb? Be interesting to know how long it had been there. Could have been a long time. They knew he'd go to the phone. Yeah, I wonder why he didn't have voicemail on his private line. Well, when he answered the phone, they probably pushed the remote button. You know how lucky you were to leave when you did? So, how do we proceed? We? Look, it's my case and I'm a very competent investigator. Oh, I'm sure you're a hell of a journalist. But this is a criminal investigation. It's, I think what Mike is saying, we don't want to duplicate our efforts. Oh, exactly. That's why I'll be working right alongside him. On this disc, I have some bios. There's some really good stuff in there. My guess would be whoever tipped me off to something wrong at Omticom, they wanted me to get next to Raymond so they could frame me for his murder. You don't have any idea who that is? No, but I think that that's where I should start looking. We should start looking, if that's okay with you, naturally. Well, that's the one place I could use your help for as long as it works. You know, if you two could figure out who this whistleblower is, it would be one great big piece of the puzzle, one way or another. I should start interviewing the suspects. You know, Raymond's ex-wife was supposed to be at the party, but wasn't. It'd be nice to know why she didn't show. Hmm, must have had a compelling reason. Uh, and he sent me this photo. Where was this taken? That's the building where he made the first drop at the note about Omticom. 
And he cut all of the letters out of the financial press. That doesn't tell you a lot. No, just enough to get me interested. So I'll see you tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll call you. Okay. John? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. I have to pick up some uh, cat food. Night. So, what do you think? I don't know. We really don't know what happened when she was alone with Raymond, or whether they were really involved or not, except for what she told us. Yeah, well, at least if she's with me, I can keep an eye on her. Well, I didn't say I was suspicious of her. You didn't say you believed her, either. You know, it's possible she's being framed. Unless we can find a motive, we have to assume she's innocent. Well, that's the theory, anyway, isn't it? That car wasn't there when we got here. So? It's too dark, I can't read the plates. You ought to wash that thing. Probably just a guest of a neighbor. Yeah, maybe. Take it easy in this thing, will you? Fasten your seatbelt. Send in an expedition, please. You're up. Oh, thank you. Dr. Raymond, I'm uh, Dr. Maxwell, and I thank you for taking me on such short notice. Oh, well, always happy to accommodate a fellow professional. You can have a seat. Oh, thank you. So, what seems to be bothering you? Well, this isn't about me. <laughs> it never is. No, seriously. Doctor, please. Are you embarrassed discussing things with a woman? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I'm not here as a patient. Perhaps you'd care to explain. I am a professor of criminology, and at the moment I'm working as an advisor on the defense of, of Cheryl Collins. The woman who killed Nelson. Well, that hasn't been proven yet. My marriage to Nelson was over some time ago, but that doesn't mean that I don't have feelings for him. Oh, I understand perfectly. They called me to go down to the morgue to identify his body. Not exactly the way I'd like to remember him. So I hope you don't expect me to be particularly cooperative. I would only hope you'd be truthful. That is my business. Can you think of anybody who uh, might have had a motive to kill him? <laughs> there are a lot of people damaged by Nelson. Omnicom is not the cozy little club they'd have you believe. But I guess you'd like to know if I have a motive. Now that you mention it, yes. Uh, yes, I've been fighting with Nelson for the last few months over property settlement. It has to do with our divorce. Now that he's dead, I get it all. So I suppose you'd call that a motive. Well, it, uh, it qualifies. Of course. The only problem with that is I wasn't there that evening. Oh? Where were you? Home. Alone. Reading a good mystery. What's that? My bill. I get paid by the hour, Dr. Maxwell. It comes to uh, about $50 a question. <laughs> I did some checking with the Corporations Commission and confirmed that all three companies had in fact been set up by Raymond. What about the offshore? There's no evidence of that yet, but when the three companies didn't make it into the stockholders report 60 days ago, I figured it was worth going after. What are you doing? I'm trying to separate that background noise from the boys. Need to take it to a lab? This is a lab. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Okay, I think I got something. Miss Collins, if you do your homework, you'll find that Stella... Well, they've distorted the voice. So that means it most likely comes from a landline. Where's the call coming from? Dr. Patterson isn't just the best ornithologist at this university. He is one of the best in the world. What do you mean, one of the best? Certainly the one with the best hearing. What do you make of it, Doctor? Very odd. How odd? 
Well, there are not only a lot of birds on here, but uh, not ones you'd normally find together. Uh, parrots, lovebirds, canaries, those are typical, but you've got what sounds like a Patagonian canure. And I think I hear an African ringneck. Pet stores? Well, possibly, uh, but there's only maybe a dozen or so that would have that varied selection of birds. What about an aviary? Maybe. There's one in Santa Monica. It's a star. Winslow, thank you very much. No we problem. It. <laughs> You've been a big help, Dr. Patterson. Easy enough. If you need anything else, just uh, whistle. Just in mating season. Just make sure you keep me in frame. I only want to do one take, you got it? Okay, let's go. Omnicom isn't just the seventh largest corporation in California. And it's not that we make sure that our customers across the United States get the best possible value for our wide variety of products. From household goods, to energy, to insurance, to the very television you're watching now. No, Omnicom is about people. I tell all my executives, we don't own these offices. We're just occupying them on behalf of our customers. Whether it's that farmer in Iowa or that plumber in New Jersey, this company is here for them and their families. That's right. Most of all, we care about people. And we get mail from a lot of you out there. And we read every letter. Well, who put this here? This is from the SEC, for God's sake. Cut the camera. Cut the camera. Give me the tape. Give me the tape. Come on, the tape. All right, just leave. Get out of here. Out. 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 Who the hell are you, and what are you doing here? Professor Jonathan Maxwell, Mr. Arch. What's this about? A grant or something? Do I have an appointment with you? No, no, I'm a professor of criminology. I've been retained as part of the Cheryl Collins defense team. Well, I have to admit, I have a hard time believing she did it. I'm the one who hired her. Who knew she was a reporter, for God's sake? Now Raymond's death has brought the vultures out, spreading lies and rumors about this company. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, if they are lies. You know, I uh, bought some shares in the company. Just a few is all I can afford, but Omnicon seemed like the wave of the future. Well, we still are, and we'll ride out this storm. There's absolutely no proof of any wrongdoing, just just vicious insinuations. Well, with your chief financial officer, it'd be hard for anybody to find any evidence. I mean, if there is any, it probably isn't any. Well, if Cheryl Collins didn't kill Raymond, and I sincerely hope she didn't, I wish you the best of luck. Of course, if I get any thoughts, I'll give you a call. I appreciate your cooperation. Oh, listen, there's a rumor that Mr. Raymond and your uh, wife are having an affair. No. Who told you this? I have these pictures taken a couple of weeks ago with Mr. Raymond and your wife. You have to admit they're a little compromising. Where did you get this? Well, actually, they were taken by accident. When uh, Miss Collins was tipped that there was something odd going on at Omnicom, I mean, she hired a photographer. He was just following Mr. Raymond when he took these candid photos. You know, that's not bad for telephoto lens at low light. I wonder what he used. Get out. Get out or I'll have you thrown out. I am on Just sorry. get out and I hope Cheryl Collins gets what she deserves. I'm leaving. Sweat. The... I suppose that can be meant. I'm sorry. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know, this doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would your tipster make a call from here? Shh. Can't hear the birds. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What? What is... Excuse me. 
Have you ever seen any of these people? Him or this woman or her? No? Okay, hey. Yeah, here you go. It's been a big help. How about you? Recognize anyone? No? Mr. Burke? Mr. Burke, this is Jonathan Maxwell. I'm working on the, on the Cheryl Collins defense. Won't take much time. It's better than having to answer a subpoena. Sure you're alone? Well, you sure. Oh, oh. What, yeah, uh. Just a minute, who, who are you people? You stay out of this. Don't worry. Why do you have to make everything so difficult? Come on, I'm good for it, Vic. I used to think that, which is why we loaned you the hundred thousand. I'm working on a couple of things, liquidating some assets. I just need a little time. Which is exactly what you've got, a little time. Until noon tomorrow. Don't worry. I ain't gonna worry. I want you to worry. Got it. Good. Keep your eye on your wallet. You all right? Not exactly. Thanks for asking. You know, I'm sorry to come at such a uh, bad time, but I really need to talk to you. I've got nothing to say. Just that I don't believe Cher was up to it, and I know I didn't. With Raymond's death, the company is under investigation. As you can see, I've got some problems. I had a much brighter future if he was alive. Do you have any idea who might have done it? I really don't know. If I had a clue, I'd tell you. They certainly haven't done me any favors. Well, I didn't have a lot of progress with my three interviews. The ex-wife and the CEO have personalities that could include homicidal tendencies, but Burke, <laughs> not the type. Besides, he was too terrified to do much of anything. You're in for a treat. We didn't have much luck on the pet store front either. We visited every single one that sells them. Yep. We took the tape back to Professor Patterson. Played him what we recorded. He said they didn't match. You know, maybe you're in former head of the bird's house later. Why would he do that? Maybe to cover up the background. Or maybe to add a background where there wasn't any. Been doing a little experimenting while you were out. A friend of mine over the Department of Building and Safety emailed me some plans that Raymond had approved for some remodeling on his house. Some of it included enlarging the basement. But uh, here's the ground floor. Here. Now, when the phone rang, you were in the study. Then you heard footsteps and you left the house. And then Raymond came out of the bedroom and went to the cabinet where the phone was ringing and the bomb went off. What's it supposed to tell us? I timed Cheryl's walk to the car. It was a good 30 seconds before she actually got in the car and started the engine. But you didn't hear the phone ringing outside, did you? No. It shouldn't have taken Raymond more than five, maybe ten seconds to get from the bedroom to the cabinet where that bomb was. So what happened during the missing 20 to 25 seconds? I don't know. Well... Keep looking on this model till we learn some more. Oh, here's the audio tape again. Now, this is without the bird sounds. They were pretty easy to take out. Evidently, let them in later. There's no ambient sound at all. Exactly. But there's a slight reverberation around the voice. And that, that's not distortion either. That's burning. Wow. 
I'm not going in there. I bet it's okay. It's all right. It's normal. He's just kicking it up a notch. Chinese? Chinese. I'll call. So, under the circumstances, and I think in the spirit of fairness, you should fine for the defendant. Thank you, Ms. Larch. I think this is a good time to call for a noon recess. Bailiff? All rise. This court stands in recess for one hour. It was pretty slick. Thank you, Professor Maxwell. You were expecting me? My husband described you perfectly. He warned me that you might loom up unexpectedly. Well, then you know I'm here. I have a pretty good idea. Any more of those so-called incriminating photos? Oh, well, I've got some here. I, you know, I wasn't going to show them to you, but I didn't want to embarrass you. I don't easily embarrass. Good, here they are. Well, if you're hoping to cause troubles between my husband and I, you're sadly mistaken. Raymond was going through a difficult patch in his separation, and I was merely consoling him. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, Raymond and I go all the way back to college together. When I explained what happened to my husband, he understood immediately. Well, I'm sure that's a relief uh, for you. I mean, given uh, Raymond's reputation with the ladies, if he had uh, dropped you and you thought that Cheryl was the new young thing... <laughs> I'm not the impulsive type, Professor. Oh, I could see that. You were like a surgeon there with that cross-examination. I'll take that as a compliment. Incidentally, do you have any idea who it was contacted Cheryl Collins into tipping her to investigate Omnicom? I wish I did. This company isn't in trouble, and all it's done is to stir up a lot of unfavorable publicity. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go. Don't you have to be somewhere? Uh, you are somewhere, yes. Do you, uh, do you know if anybody here validates? I think not. I can tell you what level your car is on. So this is where I was standing when they took the photo of me waiting for the drop. How long were you waiting? About 15 minutes. And then a kid on a bike handed me a manila envelope with the documents. No idea who sent them, right? No, I said a guy in a beat-up car gave him 10 bucks. Excuse me. Brian here. Oh, hi, Diane. Sure, yeah, I'll just meet you there. Yeah, I remember where your dad's beach club is. That's the one with all the sand, right? Ah, yeah, see you there. Telling you what tie to wear? Why do you suppose he sent the photo? Messing with my head, mostly. Letting me know I'm being watched. And making sure you come alone. Well, from the angle of the photo, it's probably taken from up there. I'm thinking third floor. Good morning, and thank you all for coming to the fourth annual Omnicom Shareholders Best Ball Tournament. Before we tee off, I'd like to say just a few words. As you know, the tragic events surrounding the death of our colleague Nelson Raymond have generated a lot of rumors, innuendo, and speculation. Max, if that's true, then why did financial press send in an undercover reporter? Well, Patsy, as you should know, sometimes reporters will do anything, fabricate anything, go to any length just to concoct a story. Max, uh, after you were defeated in the congressional primary two years ago, now you signed on as the main lobbyist for Omnicom, isn't that true? Well, that's no secret. On the night of the murder, did you actually hear what Nelson Raymond and Cheryl Collins were arguing about? No. I was outside with everyone else, but I, I could see through the window that there was a heated argument going on. By the way, do I know you? I don't ever remember seeing you at any of the uh, stockholder meetings. No, I wouldn't think so. I'm a professor of criminology. I'm working on the Cheryl Collins defense. I have uh, five uh, shares of... This is hardly the time and place. 
Getting back to the business at hand, I urge you all to wait for the next quarterly report due out in just a few weeks to decide for yourselves the health of Omnicom. Thank you all for coming. Good luck, and I'll uh, see you out on the links. And later at the banquet. Son of a gun died. You really a PI? Sure am. Cool. Okay. You into the old detective shows? Uh, sure, I guess. Yeah, cause I sure am. I always thought I'd make a great private dick. <laughs> well, you know, maybe you can help me out. This is about a piece of vital evidence. A photo that would have been taken about four weeks ago from this office window. Really? This office? Yep. Could you uh, check and see who was here on the 23rd of last month? Yeah, I sure can. Here we go. 23rd was a Tuesday. It looks like the same groups meet here every weekday evening. Every weekday? Yeah, except Wednesdays. Like today, the office is closed. You don't say. You, uh, you recognize any of these people? No, but I don't usually hang around in the evenings. Well, thanks for your time. Uh, we'll let you know if we need you in court. Really? That would be great. Uh, what, what should I wear? Uh, this looks good. This is nice. Yeah, what about a tie? Uh, no, no ties. Really? Because I, I got a great tie my wife just gave me. It, it's Paisley. I, I, I think you'd like it. Parked on the green. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm really sorry. Just a couple of things I wanted to ask. Could you just tell me, did you get things patched up with Raymond before he before he died? Nelson and I never had any problems, personal or otherwise. Well, you know, there are several people who said they saw you having a heated argument, the two of you in the boardroom late at night, just the two of you. And then a young man from the mailroom said he saw you take a swing at Raymond. Is that true? Well, if you must know, I was beginning to worry about his secretive way of doing business and whether or not it was going to affect the rest of us, put us in any kind of jeopardy or not. Words were exchanged. Truth be known, Nelson and I never really cared very much for each other's styles. He always thought that I was just another crooked politician. I always thought he was just a thief in an expensive suit. Which one of you was right? Uh, your phone. I, uh, I can't, I can't talk right now. Yes, yes, I'll be there, of course. Listen, do you miss being in uh, Congress? No, no, I don't. But I am missing the opportunity to prepare for this golf tournament, so if you'll just excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. Cleared up a couple of things for me. Thank you. Well, that's just fine. That's mine. Oh, sure is. Oh, <laughs> I'll get it. You're right, that is yours. How do you like that? Head in my hand all the time. <laughs> Thanks. Right now, but if you did you find out anything? Yeah, not enough. I don't think anybody took your photo from that office. Yeah, but the office was closed the next day. So someone might have snuck in and taken the front of this building. They just wouldn't have had you in a shot. You, they put in later. Someone's going through an awful lot of trouble to cover their tracks. Where else did you go that day? 
I went straight from my house to my publisher's office. Why? Well, for one thing, what you're wearing would have been the same. I mean, even if the photos were changed. Let's go back to your place. I want to check something.
Well, I'm sorry to drag y'all down here, but under the circumstances, we have to keep a low profile. What circumstances, exactly? The SEC is looking into our records, and they're gonna see that Raymond was clicking the books. With Nelson's unfortunate death, we have the opportunity to just circle the wagons and protect ourselves. You mean lay all the blame on poor dead Nelson? I know it sounds cold-blooded, Louise, but nothing we can do can bring Nelson back. And we all stand to profit. I've spoken to a couple of sympathetic investment houses, and they'll help us weather the storm. Nobody wants to see another Enron. Which can't happen because Nelson's records were destroyed in the fire. And there aren't any other copies, are there, Louise? No, I happen to know there aren't. And I'm happy to hear we're all going to profit. I assume that does include the Mary Widow, me? Absolutely. Could you be more specific? We're prepared to buy your inherited shares at the market price before this tragedy. As a show of good faith on the part of the company, and as compensation for your suffering. Well, that sounds very compassionate. So, uh, where is Mr. Charles Burke? Isn't he a member of your team? He knew about this meeting. I talked to him this morning. Doesn't that seem a little bit suspicious? If we're all agreed, I'd say this meeting could adjourn. I'd like a cashier's check. Delivered to me today. You'll get it. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, I'm not having a memorial service. I'm sure he would have wanted it that way. Hang around her long enough and you'll catch cold. This is better work out. The sooner she gets that check, the better. It's our insurance policy. I just don't want to be the next executive to end up in prison. Don't worry, Max. We're all in this together. We're family. Oh, Max. Get some rest. Don't worry. What if Cheryl didn't kill Nelson? So what if she did? Then one of us did. So what? Well, if one of us gets caught, say by your professor, he or she could bring our whole stack of cards down. Maybe we should let the jury sort it all out. Personally, if I had to bet, I'd put my money on Louise. Unlike the rest of us, she's not just protecting herself. After all, she's coming out way ahead. Maybe she did. Do you care? No. I don't. I'll see you later. So I had to look for my phone. Of course, it was the wrong number. So you were standing about here? Yeah. That photographer had to be close. You know, that photo could have been taken from up there. Your reception seems to be out of lunch. Going somewhere? I'm uh, getting away for a while. Need a little time to myself. Hmm. 
Well, at least you know you can afford any vacation you want now. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I mean, you're coming into some money. We have that uh, cashier's check already, huh? I think you'd better go. You know, it might interest you to know that your co-conspirators at Omnicom think you might be the one who killed your husband. Leave, or I'll call security. You know, I wouldn't uh, be leaving town just yet. The police might want to talk to you. Yeah, yeah, that professor was here again. He knows a lot more than he should. Well, we'd better do something. car twice before. And it was cruising us when we were downtown. others. Necessarily. Mr. Burke? Mr. Burke is Jonathan Maxwell. Mr. Burke! Hey, man in black. What? I think we have to get into Burke's house. Why? What? Man. What's going this guy's on? more trouble is worth it. What do you say, Vic? Burke? Mr. Burke? I have a little weasel in here. Mr. 
Berk? Hey, Berk! Berk, come on out! photo and clone her over here you know whoever did this sophisticated technically not that sophisticated what do you mean look here can you zoom in on that newspaper yeah there that headline i'm missing something well this is wednesday's newspaper with tuesday's election results i'll be darned it might you good oh, he's bound to trip up sooner or later he almost did with that stolen car. You know, maybe we just turned the heat up enough to force his hand. The big question is, what does this mysterious whistleblower have to do with Louise Raymond? You know, I'm going to do a little checking around on the Internet, see what I can find out. This could take me a while, kid. Come on, I'll take you home. Bye. See you later. Mm, have fun. Samantha, baby. Uh, curiosity killed a cat, you know. I think you should stay here tonight. Any suggestions? Like your place? <laughs> actually, that is the suggestion. I, you know, I have a spare bedroom. Fold up, actually. What are we looking at here? Thanks. This is the electrical plot for the remodel Raymond did at his house. Look how many electrical outlets he's got in there. Must have used it for a workshop or something. But the fire department said the basement was empty. Yeah. Why remodel your basement and then empty it out just before the explosion? Are you suggesting that Louise Raymond knows how to make a bomb? I'm suggesting she might have had help. Cheryl, I want you to find out everything you can about Louise Raymond when we need it right away. Look, Mike, check with your friend at the phone company. Uh, Jimmy? Yeah, find out how many calls she made to her husband, when and how often. And also, check on your hunch about the donator wreck, too. Meet me back here as soon as you can. Right. Hello. Oh, uh, Dr. Raymond going on a holiday today? Yes. 
And she's asked me not to take any appointments until she returns. Hmm. What uh, cruise line is she taking? <sighs> she wouldn't take a ship. Her husband had a boat, and he couldn't even get her to go out on it. Oh, really? Where's the boat docked? I have no idea. Yeah. I got a fairly complete bio on Louise Raymond. She went to medical school, specialized in psychiatry, married Raymond about 12 years ago. Anything more recent at all? Uh, a lot of charity work. Um, most recent is the Veterans Administration. Ah, oh, when did she start that? Uh, a couple months ago. That makes sense. Listen, uh, Raymond had a boat. Do you have any idea where it's docked? As a matter of fact, I do. Oh, good. I gotta get there before it's too late. What's the matter? Have you seen my car keys? Come on, I'll take you. Where'd I put my cell phone? Oh, it's among the missing. Better call Mike and tell him where we are. I can handle that. He's not answering. Better keep trying it. sooner, but I had to piece together your seasickness medicine with your husband's yacht. Took me a while. And then when I found out, of course, that you work at a VA hospice, everything just fell together. Both of you, on the boat. Get on the boat. I got it. Get your hands down. Okay. You know, it wasn't a bad plan. You're working at the VA, you had access to a corpse, somebody with no family, nobody would ever inquire about him. But there was a 20-second discrepancy between the time it took you to come from the bedroom alone and answer the phone. But that was the time it took you two to place the body. That's a narrow window of opportunity, but smart people like you wouldn't leave anything to chance. I bet you rehearsed it until you had it down, including the phone call and the time to get outside to a safe place and set off the explosion. And you know what was the really nice touch? When you identified the body as your husband. I mean, nobody would question whether he was dead or not. Especially when the grieving widow shows up to identify her ex-husband's body. I'll bet you really put on a show for the sympathetic people who walked you through the process down at the morgue. And you were the mysterious whistleblower. That puts you in the driver's seat from the word go. You pulled Cheryl in by dangling a huge story in front of her and made her your unwitting accomplice. You recorded that message in your basement and then removed all the equipment that could be traced to you. You managed a lot of moving pieces for a dead man. You almost got away with it. Except when we started uh, nosing around and got a little nervous and you decided to skip out before you'd planned. And he wasn't going to leave you behind to get cold feet. So he insisted to get on the boat with him. You'll tell me if I left anything out. Unfortunately, you're not going to get a chance to prove any of this. No, he insisted you get on the boat right away. That way he could see that he got the cashier's check himself and you would disappear somewhere out to sea. And then he could keep everything for himself. What exactly is the big rush? I was supposed to meet you in a few months after Cheryl was convicted. Don't listen to him. Just get on the boat. I don't think so. You're not thinking clearly. I said get on board. I don't think this is working, Mr. Raymond. 
I were you, I would just call this off. You know, actually, I just need you to stand still for a few seconds, okay? Thank you. Help! I got the plate number off the fire wreck that he left at the lot. I remember there were parking restrictions at Cheryl's place and figured maybe he got a ticket. He did. And rather than risk getting pulled over, he paid it. Oh, and some of the uh, phone calls from his wife are from the ship to shore phone on the boats. So I figured maybe he was holed up here. Nice work. Do I get an A? Well, nobody's perfect. A minus. You get an E for effort. All charges against my client have been dropped, and Dr. and Mrs. Raymond have been arrested for criminal conspiracy. I'll take questions now. Miss St. John, will your client be testifying in the trial? Well, it seems like a good time to sell my Omnicom stock. Well, you may be a little late. According to the newspaper, it is sinking fast. Well, for once, I don't know what to say. I, I owe the two of you my life. 20 years of it anyway. Well... Can maybe with good behavior. Thank you. <laughs> I'll walk you out. Okay. Can I uh, interest you in some dinner? Oh, I'd really love to, but I have a meeting with my publisher to talk about the book on this case. That well, shouldn't be a total loss. Besides, don't you have plans with Diane? Actually, I've been fired as her fiancé. Sorry about that. That's okay, I was gonna quit anyway. Well, the really nice thing about dinner is you can do it on any given night. Like, say, tomorrow. Well, an actual date. I guess you could call it that. I guess I will. Love a great mystery? Check this out. Hallmark Movies and Mysteries presents Alice and Sweeney in Murder, She Baked. Aurora Tea Garden starring Candace Cameron Bure. <laughs> Lori Loughlin in Garage Sale Mystery. It all begins with motive. Brooke Shields in Flower Shop Mystery. You like to meddle, don't you? I hate that word. The Sunday Night Mystery Movies on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. You'll like what you see.